Hello, so this is going to be a video on some old bits of Russian or Soviet night vision equipment, um, which is quite interesting. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be very hard to actually demonstrate on camera. Um, and with this Cyclops 1 unit, or Cyclops 1 unit, it actually um, needs a 42mm camera lens, I believe, that screws in, and I don't have one of those. So I can't demonstrate this one very effectively. I can probably show you that it glows green, it actually works, but until I get a lens for it, um, I can't demonstrate it. But what I've got is the Cyclops 1 unit, which is the night vision device, um, an IR illuminator for it, which is apparently a very bright sort of eye cancer style one, so I'll demonstrate that on the camera in a minute. Um, and also, this is a very strange thing that nobody's been able to ID. It says Russia on the bottom and um, has a serial number, but this is also a um, night vision device. So basically, this is old Gen 1 light amplification devices. So how these work, um, in a very simple way of me explaining it, and I'm sure I'll explain it badly, is that they use um, photocathode tubes, like CRTs. Um, the light that enters is amplified sort of going into this optic. The tube basically accelerates the protons or electrons, however it works, and then this bit you look through um, is displayed on a phosphor screen and they appear brighter. So these are fairly simple in theory, although they're complicated, it's just basically it's speeding up or multiplying whatever hits the front lens. So that's that. So they actually, this one actually works really well, and as I said the Cyclop looks like it should work well, it powers on and everything. Now both of these have the idea that you can use an IR illuminator with them, and what that means is that basically if we're using them and it's too dark um, for the night vision to amplify light effectively, you can use the IR light that they pick up, but normal people won't be able to see it unless they're also looking through a night vision device. So what I'll do with this one is you can see there's a little tiny hole on that cover there, and that's so you can use it inside or in the daylight without burning it out. So let's just turn it on. And there you go, you can see it's green. Now maybe you can even see my face through that, looks like you can. So there's that. Um, obviously, as you know, the light's on at the moment, so that's not that impressive. So what I'm going to do now is stop the video, turn the lights off, and then I'll demonstrate some of these bits in the dark. But as I said, unfortunately, it's very difficult to film through these. So as much as I want to do a load of videos of these at night, until I rig up something that lets me, you know, mount the camera behind it and hold it as a single unit, it's going to be fairly ineffective because these obviously don't save to SD cards or whatever. They're old analog sort of tubes. But yeah, let's uh, show you at least what I can show you on video and see if anything interesting comes of it. Right, so the only light at the moment is the monitor, and I want to keep that on just so you get um, an idea of, you know, background level of light and the camera manages to focus it at all. So what I'm going to do now is pop this back cover off, and then I'm just going to hold the power button down again to make sure this is fully powered on. Now, hopefully, you can still see my face pretty well. Now what I'll do now is flick the monitor off, so if you're watching, you should see that the monitor should go off if the remote wants to work. There you go. So right, let's put that back on, and hopefully what will happen is the camera might adjust its auto exposure to show this fairly well. But unfortunately I don't think it is, so that's if I put the IR illuminator on. There you go. And again, the camera's focus is going to be different than the human eye's focus. But the point is, if I was to wear this and look through it, I can see perfectly. Uh, even in this dark room. Now, you can probably see the IR light there. There we go. Because cameras tend to show a bit of IR. So, um, yeah, I can see fine with this. Again, the problem with these are you have to generally focus them for what you're looking at. So let me just see if I can focus this for up close. I think that's as good as it's going to get because it is a two times zoom. So you might be able to see my face a bit better. Now you can see there are some marks on the actual thing. But maybe you can see me through there. I can swear to you it does actually work. There's the curtain, you can see that. What's that? Is that a bit of me? or That's my hand, it looks quite ghostly. I think that's my face there, which is why it's blurry because it's too close. Yeah, there's, there, there I am. So as you can see, that's me illuminated with the IR light. But there is my face. So that's my mouth, so I'm talking to the camera, but through an old night vision device. So yeah, this does work very well for what it is, but as said, it's an old Gen 1 one. No idea what brand or anything this one was, because... I'll just put that on a second. This was one that, um, basically somebody didn't know anything about it, sold it for about 40 quid on eBay. I was very happy to buy it for that price, and it works, but again, not much is known about it. So what I'll demonstrate next is this bright IR thing. So that's the Cyrillic on the side. So this is the 
IR bit, and it also has a little IR light on the back, but I think that light on the back is just to tell you it's on. Um, so what you might be able to see of the camera is that there is an IR coming out of that, and the idea is that you can focus it, you know, and adjust it using the um, little focus ring here. Obviously do not look through that, because that would not be a good idea. But yeah, this is literally just a little handheld, um, you know, IR light. So the idea is this is just, you know, another flashlight for your night vision device if you're operating in very dark conditions, you know. There's another little thing here, I don't know if that's for um, putting it onto like some sort of mount, but yeah, all in all, quite cool. Um, this one takes three AAA batteries, but yeah. So that would be attached to your Cyclops unit with a camera lens, and what you'd do is you'd use this as your flashlight for complete darkness. But let's have a look at the actual Cyclops one now. So what I'll do is flick off this light again, and then let's power on the Cyclops 1, lovely green brightness, but again, unfortunately, you're not going to see much through it because it's not got the camera lens on it, but as you can see, lovely bright green, uh, bright green photo cathode there, so um, yeah, this definitely works, it's just you can't really see anything with it other than making out light sources because um, it's not got a lens to focus it. And I know it works because I can put my hand in front of it and it gets darker and lighter. So there we go. That is oh, that's really cool looking at the um, light from my microphone on my desk. That's really bright through that. But yeah, as I said, unfortunately you won't be able to see much through the Cyclops because I don't actually have the... Um, that's just a reflecting camera back. I don't have the, um, you know, bit for it. So what I'm going to do just to protect it is put this face down on the desk while it powers itself down um, while I turn the light on because too much light into night vision can damage them or destroy them. And there we go. So that is um, the video on night vision devices. Hopefully you found it interesting. As I said, it's unfortunately quite hard to demonstrate these on camera. Um, but yeah, this is old Gen 1 night vision. Pretty cool stuff, you know, the classic green night vision that amplifies light. Interestingly, this is all still analog technology, as I was saying, CRT tubes and everything. Some people have said certain models of these can give you eye cancer. That is actually scientifically possible, because I was looking into this. Um, most night vision devices won't, but whenever you have CRT displays, like the old CRT TVs, maybe for some of my audience they won't even remember what these are, but before flat screens we had CRTs, cathode ray tubes. Um, and they actually used on big CRT TVs about four to eight pounds of lead mixed in with a glass. And the reason is CRT tubes, when a current is run through them, especially a high current, generate X-rays, similar to gamma rays. Um, so they're shooting out from your TV as you're watching it. So the reason for the lead in the glass is to stop the X-rays coming out. Um, on certain night vision optics, especially if they are made to be cheap, um, lead wasn't mixed in with the glass. So when you're looking through it, the X-rays are shooting out from the cathode rays directly into your eyes. Lovely. Um, what I'll do at some point, and I believe this is a video um, suggested by Dr. Terminator show ages ago, and I can finally get around to doing it now, is comparing different types of night vision equipment. So, for example, Gen Zero, Gen One, digital night vision, and um, FLIRs, because I now have a lot of this equipment, so I can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of what they do, whereas before I just kind of had a digital bit of night vision, so it was quite hard to talk about and not really be able to demonstrate any of it. But all of them have their pros and cons. Um, and that's, that's a subject for a later video, but thanks for watching.